Hey, so in this tutorial, I'll be covering what Simplify 3D is and how we use it in this class to uh, slice our parts and send them to the 3D printer. Um, you create your files in Creo, right? You create your part files in Creo. Um, once your part file is done, you're going to actually end up hitting the print button and you're going to save it as a 3D print. It creates an STL file. This STL file is then sent into Simplify 3D. Um, Simplify 3D is the slicer program. It slices that three-dimensional part you created in Creo into layers. And then the, la and then the 3D printer prints layer by layer your part. So this is Simplify 3D. Um, we can pan by holding the right click. We can zoom in and out with the wheel and then we can rotate by holding the left click. So this is a simulation of our 3D printer. Um, we have two settings set up for the 3D printer. I'll go over that in a second. This top left, we have the model window. We can plug in our models into the print bed by importing. We can also remove. We can also arrange them and center them and spread them apart. Uh, we're not going to worry about this processes um, um, model tree because we're going to end up uh, leaving these the same because it's set up the way I like it. Uh, but we will talk about how you edit the process certain parts of it. Um, let's go ahead and import a, a uh, calibration cube for a test. It drops the part in. So this part is a calibration cube so we can just test in how well the 3D printer works. It's a six-sided cube with Y's, X's, and a Z printed on it. Some pluses, plus signs, some circles. The bottom's flat but it's got a notch outside. Okay. This is the calibration cube. We can also import multiple parts. So if we had multiple calibration cubes, oops, we can center and arrange them. We have four. Okay, we can remove one at a time. So we can print multiple things on the bed at once. Four calibration cubes, or four different parts, five different parts. However many can fit. Um, we'll do just one calibration cube for now. Um, center arrange spaces them out, centers them in the bed. Edit process settings. In this, we're only going to worry about a couple things. All the settings in here, we I, I don't want you to touch. I want to go over a couple things. You will change certain aspects, but for the most part, it's set up the way we need to for our 3D printers. Um, we have two different. Um, Two different uh, printers set up here: the Maker, the MP Maker Pro MK1, and we have the Maker Select Plus. Those are two 3D printers we have in the back. And the settings are set up the way I like for them. We have the tabs down here. We're really only going to worry about the Layer tab, the Additions tab, uh, and the Infill tab. We can also change the infill right here as well, infill percentage. Um, and we could change the plastic. We'll be using PLA for almost everything we do in here. So we're going to select this Maker Select Plus as the printer. Um, I'm going to go over some of these things. Um, this is these are settings for the tool head themselves. These are set. We have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in the tool head, and uh, we're not going to touch the extrusion multiplier. All these settings here work best with the printer. The layer tab. So, depending on how structurally sound you want your um, part or how clean of a print we want, we can change a couple things here. The primary layer height we're going to set, we're going to have left set at 0.2 millimeters. If you need really fine detail, we can move it down to 0.1 millimeters. It's just going to double the amount of time the print takes because it has to do twice as many layers. Uh, the top solid models, we have four layers of complete plastic on the top and bottom. Everything else is going to be honeycombed in the inside, but on the outsides, the shells, is going to be two. Um, there's no need to infill this entire cube with plastic. We'll honeycomb the inside because it's still just structurally sound and we're not using as much plastic. So that's why our infill percentage is at 20%. We're not going to touch the first layer settings. These are specifically um, edited for the printer itself. They are ready to go. 
The additions tab is really where you're going to be um, this and the, changing the infill is what you're really going to be changing on uh, for your prints. We have uh, a skirt or a brim we can add or we have a raft. Most of the times we're just going to use a skirt. And a skirt will be one layer, one outline layer, four millimeters away. And I'll kind of I'll go back and show you what a brim would look like and then what a raft will look like in the simulator. But for now we're going to leave it as a skirt. We're going to leave the info percentage at 20%. We can change minute settings here and there, but we're not going to really worry about that. We can raise and lower the infill from here. Um, if it's a really small part, we may want to infill 100%, but for the most part of the times, so we're going to be infilling about 10 to 20%. 10 won't be as much plastic, it'll be less, it'll be more brittle, but a 20% is, is generally good enough for what we're going to be printing. Um, unless it's a small part, that's maybe like if it's a pin for a um, peg hole, then maybe you want it 100% infill because we want to make sure it's solid. But we'll deal with that on a per part basis. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, put it through the simulator and see what happens. So we're gonna prepare the print, and then it shows up here. And right now I'm viewing this preview by layers. So we can actually show the animation of how it's printing layer by layer. So if I hit play, it shows you every layer, each layer at a time changes. So it's going to be 100 layers thick, and you can kind of move through these and see what each layer would look like. So this is what I mean by the honeycomb, 20% infill. If you change the infill, so if you made it less than 20%, these squares inside the honeycomb would be larger. If you made it greater than 20%, they'd be smaller. Okay. This is the skirt. The skirt is four millimeters away. It's just enough to prime the tool head, so that we're not ha that we're getting a continuous clean flow. Um, and it's four millimeters away, one layer, one outline. Okay. We can also change this preview by line, so we can view by lines of code it takes to print this part. It shows you by lines of code it takes to print the part. Now it's a lot of lines of code as you can see, so you can kind of go through this yourself. It's going to take 14,739 lines of code to complete this part. So we can do it by line if we want to. By layer is good enough. Um, at the top, the statistics at the top left here, we can see that it's going to take 27 minutes to build this the current settings. It's going to take 1,464.6 millimeters of filament, so that's how long plastic that's, that's um, reeling out will be. It's going to weigh about 4.4 grams, and it's going to cost 10 cents to make. The color here, the differences in the color, shows you how long, e how long each layer will take in millimeters a minute. So everything is dark blue, like this portion, it's going to be about 525 millimeters a minute. For this top part of the part, it's going to be pretty much quicker, about 2,220 millimeters a minute. And that's just because there's less to print at the top than it is in the bottom. Um, let's go back and show you. So this is that's the brim there, this that one outline. Let's see what a, a skirt, that's the skirt right there, excuse me. Let's see what a brim would look like the process additions we're going to still have one we're gonna have one layer we're still gonna but we're gonna offset it zero millimeters away and let's make it five outlines so what this does it creates a brim like a brim of a hat so this brim is attached to it so it adds a little bit of stability um, now being at zero millimeters away it you may have to slice it off if zero millimeters, if you don't want it that strong, we can make it 0.1 millimeters away. And then what that will do, it's slightly away, it'll still add some stability, but it'll be easier to peel away from the part. 
so that's a brim. So it's just a little bit more stability. Uh, it may help if it's a really tall, narrow object and uh, and you need extra stability so it doesn't like fall over during the print. Um, that way you have more surface area at the bottom. Let's show what a raft looks like. I'm gonna just change this back so I don't forget. Okay, a raft. We don't need to change anything else. We'll just select raft. Creates kind of like a, you know, what it sounds like. It's a raft it sits on. It prints a raft under the part. It's gonna take more material, but it uh, it's for better adhesion. Maybe it's a part that uh, it's kind of funny at the bottom, and it's kind of hard for it to stick to bed. Me may need to print with a raft. And you see how this is gonna take now 31 minutes to print. Okay, let me go back. We're gonna set it back to skirt. Okay. Alright. So that's our preview now. So once this is done, we're ready if we're ready to print. This oh by the way, this line here, this is additional prime line that's set up. So it's gonna prime this line first and then do the skirt. It's just extra additional priming. Um, because sometimes it's not enough just to do this prime line, so we can use a skirt as well. Okay, um, once ready to print, you're gonna have to save tool pass to a disk. So we use SD cards to print. You'll save it to the SD card and then you'll go to the printer and print it. Okay, let me go back and let's test the other printer. So let's say if we we're gonna use a different printer. So we go back to process. We wanna go to the maker, I didn't wanna save. Uh, the MP Maker Pro MK1. So this is the different printer. So you see how the bed changes. It's a much taller um, printing area because the bed is uh, much um, has much more open space into it. Uh, we can center again, and m most of these settings are going to be somewhat similar, but uh, it's just a different bed for the most part. So it can take a lot higher part. Okay. Um, let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about uh, supports and let's talk about arranging objects. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna import uh, a student's part here. And I'm not sure which one it is, so I'm gonna open them all. Okay, this is someone from one of my classes. that one okay that's the only part I'm looking at so this part it's very intricate it's got a lot of stuff we have to look at so for one thing it's not flat on the bottom right so how is it gonna be able to print something here it's gonna fall down right that's an overhang we need support material okay so we can add support material by selecting customized support structures support generation so if we wanted to have the support pillars at four millimeters it look like that so it's going to create kind of supports underneath for it to sit on four millimeters is generally too big that's what two looks like and that's one one's a little bit better because see if you see these holes for these buttons here if we had them at four there's no supports there it's too large so you can kind of play with it a three could work but a lot of times it's just easier to do one and you get and that way it's more fine and it's uh, going to be better um, at supporting the part. So that's how you create supports for the part. Um, next thing, um, let's say, let's remove this part. I want to show you. This, this part, small little thing. But uh, oops. So this part, zoom in. It's a, it's the button that went into this, right? So the the bottom of this button has got little dots. This look like a 
almost a textured grip on it. We can't print this side up because it's gonna, we need to create support material underneath. So as an example, if I would print in this fashion, um, it's not gonna even do it because these are so small. So this bottom is not gonna turn out right because it's elevated, right? Those buttons aren't flat. So the uh, best way to print this part is actually to turn it uh, 180 degrees. So if you double click on this part, it's gonna open up this menu. We could change scaling if we want to. We can change the position. So by moving this, we can actually slide it down left and right, okay? Uh, the problem that we really wanna rotate this thing, so see how it rotates. We really wanna rotate 180 degrees, and then we can center and range again. There it is. That's better. It's gonna print like this now. But the underside's still hollow, but at this point now, we should be able to have support material underneath and not have a problem. Yes, that's what we wanna do. So we can create support material by clicking support generation. You can change the resolution. Generally, we're gonna be printing at one millimeters and they're gonna be normal supports. And then the max overhang, because remember the 45 degree um, principle we use, anything above 45 degrees, we're gonna have problems. So 45 and under, we don't have to have supports, but we set it to 45 and then we can generate automatic supports that way. Um, and then by double clicking on the part, we can pull up this rotation scaling and change position so we can actually rotate the part if we want to okay get the idea so yeah so we can configure the parts uh, this whole print as an example let's just set this all up we want to create supports for all these parts so this part needs supports this part and we can actually uh, shift click on all these select multiple things so they're all going to need supports this pillar looks fine there we go how long would this print take let's see Prepare our process it's going to take five hours and 28 minutes to print this part print these parts, multiple parts. 275 layers. As you can see, how many lines of code is this? It's gonna be a lot. 21,240 lines of code. So yeah, that's a uh, little brief introduction to uh, Simplify 3D. Just for kicks, let's see if we change the printers. Five hours, 25, 28 minutes. Let's just say if we uh, use the other printer, what would the difference be? Let's see. Yeah, let's see. These parts are much bigger on this printer. Let's see. Five hours and two minutes. So make your select plus is a little bit quicker. You can use this printer than the other printer. But the uh, MK1 Pro, you're gonna be able to make something much larger. But yeah, that's a uh, quick introduction to uh, Simplify 3D. It's a, slicer, um, it's, it's a slicing program that we use for 3D printing.